So I think that we can just start. Uh, I have a lot of ses a lot, a lot of topic to. Oh, thank you, Sharon. <laughs> so we have a lot of uh, things to go through, and then actually, I I would really love to be able to have an interactive session as well, and to be able to answer your questions uh, and see how much I can help out if you want to get involved in non-code contribution, which is the topic of the day. So I am going to start and uh, I am Patti. Um, most of you know me as uh, Patti Sonja, but uh, my real name is Bjarne Sonja Olafsdóttir. Uh, Patti is the short of the Bjarne one and brighter this because I got, a mar got married to a, a guy with the last name brighter. So I got that also on my name. So, um, but I've been, I am yeah, been called that buddy since I was small and I come from Iceland and currently I live in Frankfurt, Germany and I have a bachelor degree in computer science and I also did some engineering. Um, I am the owner and co-founder of One Next Internet and I'm going to tell you a little bit about not much but um, I'm also a board member and treasurer of the Drupal Association and I love to teach uh, at schools and universities, so that's what I try to do when I when I have free time. Um, so One Next Internet is uh, our company, and we are located in Europe. We are forty five people, and uh, and we are coming. We come from eighteen different countries. So we speak English in our company, and we call it broken English because we don't have many native English speakers in our company, uh, but. A lot of the team is here in Frankfurt, but also in Berlin, in Iceland, Spain, uh, and from in Hungary and many other countries around Europe. And we do Drupal. That's what we've been doing for many years now. I found this uh, comment here on the on Drupal.org that I thought that was really fitting today because uh, this. Relate, I relate it to this one a lot. Uh, I'm going to read it for you. It's uh, it's really the Drupal it's really the Drupal community and not so much the software that makes the Drupal project what it is. So fostering the Drupal community is actually more important than just managing the code base. And I think like this is something that is uh, relevant for today's topic because we are going to be talking about something that is not related to the code itself. We are going to be talking about what is related to everything else that we need to do around that. So to start with, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about my journey in the Drupal world, and mainly to see if uh, some of you can maybe relate to that one, but it took me a long time to figure out that there was a Drupal community behind the, the software. So in 2007, we, I was playing around with Drupal together with my partners in my company. And then in 2011, we founded One X Internet. So this is often the first thing how you get to know open source software. You actually start to play around with the technology. That's often the first step in. But what then happens is that it took me uh, from from the moment I saw Drupal and started to play with Drupal, it actually took me around six years to go to my first Drupal event. So I realized that there was a Drupal event going on here in Germany and I decided to go to that event. And I remember that so clearly because I didn't know anyone and I came there and it was a really nice event and very friendly people, but it, I also remember being really nervous. <laughs> And then again, the year after going to the Drupal camp in Frankfurt, and probably you all have a story from your first Drupal event where it's, you know, there are all these people, they all know each other, and how do I fit in here? And it takes takes time to, to get to know people. So I'm, I'm actually happy that I kept on going to these Drupal camps, because what then that led me to going to a larger event. So the first Drupal con I visited was in Amsterdam. And exactly the same feeling happened there. So I came into Amsterdam to the DrupalCon and, and this, this was just like a Drupal camp, but just much larger. And I was also really like 
looking forward to see all the people that I've been seeing in the issue queue and uh, and I had a lot of fun there in Amsterdam that then led me to that I haven't missed a DrupalCon since then at least not in Europe but it was a, that much fun that I, I I just wanted to come again so but then I realized that maybe I could just also organize an event so we decided to organize the Northern Lights camp in Iceland. So the community in Iceland is pretty small. You know, we are not that many people. We are 300,000, but we have a lot of Drupal end users in Iceland. So we thought like, why not to set up a Drupal camp there? And uh, we created this Drupal camp uh, and suddenly there just came a lot of people and we had like 100 people coming to our camp and we thought in the start that it would maybe be 10 or something. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. So going from like going and visiting your first event and then going to the DrupalCon, being now in the position of organizing an event and having all these, you know, being together with all the other people was just a lot of fun. So we started to do the same in Germany and then we started to work on the Splash Awards. And then since probably 2018, I have been taking a little bit more of a leadership role than here in in germany at least and in europe and uh and the splash awards has now become like the splash awards uh germany austria and the global splash awards in amsterdam last year and probably what i'm most proud of and what has was a lot of fun was of course to organize drupal europe in the year when drupal con europe did not happen so this is like uh, what, I, what i think it is important for from from this story is that it doesn't mean that everybody who goes into, you know, Drupal and starts to organize something that they always have to step up and do something more. Not at all. You know, you can also feel extremely comfortable in the role that you're in. And I know really many people here in Europe that have been very successful of just organizing their local events and uh, and keep on doing that and make sure that they find other people and then can take over as well. So now I'm going to go into, so how do you, how do you actually get involved into non-code contribution uh, using the story then from why, how I did that into like, uh, how could you start to participate and what are the opportunities that we have in Drupal for those who do not code or do not want to code? Um, and I think it is appropriate to just start by looking at the community section on Drupal.org. And this uh, section has a lot of information and what is brand new and uh, is the contributor guide. And they are currently working on this. So Jennifer and Rachel and the team from the Drupal Association are working on making this better. And of course, there are more people involved. Uh, this is one of the first steps of actually being allowing people to come in and figure out what they can do. So you can browse by task, you can browse by a role, or you can browse by a skill or an area. So again, this is just work in process and they are working at this at the moment. And I think that they also need some help. So if you are interested in this, it's all under the community section and the contributor guide. So take a look there. And thank you for doing this because I think this is extremely important because it takes a lot of time to figure out like how can I be part of this community um, if people are not just immediately asking questions on Slack and especially now because we don't we can't meet in person. So it is even harder now for us to to get involved by meeting other people and that's you know so that's why this is a very important section. Um, the next thing that uh, I wanted to highlight is uh, if you like planning events, then uh, Drupal is, of course, uh, a good place for you because we always need help and always looking for help of people to help both by organizing the events and being volunteers at an event. So probably the first thing that you could do there um, is that you can start by connecting with your local event organizer. Uh, this is what I did here in Frankfurt. So by going to the first event, I then started to speak to the people who were organizing. And then you can ask you know, how you can help 
is there an opportunity for you to maybe do something small to start with to get to know how this works and uh, and trust me there's a lot of things that you can help with so if you're interested in this please uh, connect with your local event organizers but it is not always that you have someone who is um, organizing something locally so therefore there is a, an event organizer working group uh, that started so the conversation has been going on for a long time, but it was official now um, a year ago. It was announced in Amsterdam, DrupalCon, that now we officially have a Drupal event organizer working group. And the link down there is the link to the page for the event organizers. So you can also come there. You can look at the informations that are on that page. There is a Slack channel that is noted in this on the site. And also every second Tuesday of every month at 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. UTC, we have a meeting. And the meeting takes place on Zoom. And it is published in the Slack channel and also on the website. So regardless of where you are in the world, you should be able always to come to these meetings. So every second month there is the net. 12 p.m. and the other month it is 12 a.m. So if you know any other languages other than English, uh, there is the translation that you can help with. Um, for us, it is extremely important because here in, in Europe, where I come from and I live now, we of course speak very many different languages and in our company, for example, like I said before, I think we counted this 18 different languages that the people speak. So it is also important that our users and end users and those who are the editors of the system can use Drupal in their language, not in the English language. So if you want to help out and you speak any other language than English, you can go to localize.drupal.org, let's translate, and there you find a list and I'm extremely proud of the German community that had made it uh, made sure that the Drupal 9.0.7 uh, process is almost, or if it is, I think 100%. Um, so there are very many languages that have, are already covered, but we also need a lot of help in other languages. So how you do this, I just went here into the German group, which is then uh, the link that is also displayed on the slide. Uh, the localized.drupal.org slash translate slash languages slash DE. And for this one, you see who are the top contributors. So you can actually contact the contributors or you see their names. So you can actually go on their profiles or if you meet them at a local event, you, you, you can know that they are working on it. But there's also a guidelines of how you can start contributing to, to it. And often this is in the language itself. So if you go on that page, you will actually have all this information in, in German. One of my favorite things, and, um, and this is actually where I think Drupal needs the most help, is uh, project management. So I'm using this maybe as an example, the Celebrate Drupal project. Because it is very often like that, that you have a group of very enthusiastic developers and a group of people that want to do something great together, but they maybe don't necessarily know how to organize themselves. And everybody has a good idea about what they could do and, and they start working on some API connections and someone else starts to work on a gallery and other people start working on something else, but there is somebody missing to actually coordinate all this effort, make sure that the people meet in a meeting and just you know, organize the issues. And uh, in this case, uh, Sophie and myself from uh, the European community, we helped out here and there were many other people, there was Susan too, that helped out with the product management part, and that was a lot of fun. And with that, we could actually prioritize the tasks and we could help the developers to focus on what they could maybe finish first so we could get the page up and launched. 
before the Drupal 9 came out in June. So um, this basically is in every single initiative that I've seen always something that is missing or at least um, there's a lot of opportunity for people who are good than doing project management to come in and say, can I help or how can I help? And what I think it is a little bit scary sometimes when I go into these channels, they get, they are so technical and I of course go in there and I don't understand it. I don't understand the conversations that are going on because they are about some very hard problems um, from in some Drupal core things. But uh, you, if you want to do product management there, you can also just go and say, hey, I don't know much about how this works, but maybe you can explain to me what should be done first, and then I can help you to organize it. So um, if you're interested in helping out in product management, there is a channel on Slack, which is called, I think, just product managers. So on the Drupal Slack, and uh, you could join that one. So the same goes for the marketing uh, people and those who are interested in marketing. There's a lot of opportunities and this is something that has been changing a lot now in the past years. Um, and especially thanks to the Promote Drupal initiative. Um, if, if you go on the page, the community section under agency marketing, you will find the information of how you can get involved in the Promote Drupal initiative. So what the Promote Drupal initiative does is that it creates, it creates like case studies, it helps with um, promotion material around Drupal that we as agency people can use when we do pitches. And there's also like um, the case studies section that I have here on the left side with the photo of the, of the girl there on the left side. That is also a... Um, a case study that also anyone can write. So if you are now working for an agency and uh, you go on the company's profile, you can see if there's a case study there or not. And one of the first things that you could do to contribute would be to say to your agency, you know, can we put some of the case studies that we already have on our website onto Drupal.org? So there are case study guidelines of how to do that. There's a lot of information on the page that I just uh, mention here with the agency and marketing. And if you also want to get involved, there is uh, also every four weeks, there's uh, meetings going on. Um, it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it is also different time zones. And they have also created a, a video. So take a look at that if you're interested in this area. Um, if you like reviewing content, if you feel comfortable with the English language, uh, if you feel comfortable of like reviewing and seeing how others are writing about their companies, then you can look at the issue queue for Drupal.org content. And especially there for content that is being produced for the marketplace. So the marketplace on Drupal.org works like this, that the company like Canopy creates a company profile so they can say that this is their uh, company, this is what they do, here are the people. And, and before you get uh, listed on the marketplace on Drupal.org, you need to be approved by two community members. And these community members need to go through the guidelines. And in this case, I have here uh, an example of uh, an issue and the issue says, review Luce Divina for Drupal services listing. So what this issue also does, it says that this company has requested to be included in the Drupal services section. And it was generated automatically. And in order to include this one, it needs to meet the guidelines. And if you go into the guidelines, there's, it says there, does the company have people uh, connected to the company? Do they talk about what they do in Drupal and how they have contributed to Drupal? Do they, um, do they have true, like, true information? Like if they say that they have an office in, Frank in Germany, uh, is that then correct? So what you need to do, you need to go on the website of this company, you check it out. 
And it's a process that maybe takes, if you have done it often, maybe 10 to 15 minutes and you look at it and then you can comment and say either, no, it needs more work. You need to work on your profile a little bit more to be able to be included. Or on the contrary, you actually say it is okay. And as soon as there are two people that have said okay to this marketplace listing, then it will be included. So the link that I posted on this slide is a link to the issue queue of everything that needs to be reviewed. So any of you can do this and you can just go in here now during the camp, for example, look at the, an issue, look at the company and see if you can help. And this is one of the things that I like to do regularly and I do it a lot. And was this was my first chance a couple of years ago before uh, we started to get credits for non-code non contribution then this was my way of actually being able to get the credit because I, I also wanted to get the credit uh, like those who were helping out with code. So um, if you need any help here, you know, I am, I've been doing this for a long time now, so I'm really happy to help you. So ping me here on, you know, on the Badcamp Slack, Slack or here in the event uh, session uh, chat and I can help you out. And this is also a simple place to start if you feel comfortable of like right, reviewing content and if you like uh, doing things like that. So there's also a lot of room for designers and um, if you like to design there is uh, especially in this case I posted a link to the Claro theme design this is probably the best documented place for those who want to get involved in that process. So thank you to Christina and, and Sasha and everyone else that have been involved in this process. Um, so you can take a look at that one. Um, and there you also will find a link to the Figma design system of Drupal that has also been created in the past years. And you can just immediately go and start to take a look at the design system. And, uh, and there's also an issue queue where there are things to be that you can work on. So if you are interested in participating in the design, you can either go and you join the admin UI design channel on Slack, um, or you try to, you know, find out where, where there are other projects like Olivero also um, have a design contribution, uh, like what do you say, opportunity. And there are many, many other projects that need the same. And um, But I think if anything, probably we haven't been able to document this that well on a global uh, level on Drupal.org, but hopefully that will be solved soon. But Christina and Sasha, they did this uh, video recording and the design for Drupal uh, that took place earlier this year. And uh, if you're interested in design, probably this is the first of the first thing that you could take a look at, because here they will go through the design system and talk a little bit more about this in details. So, do you like helping others? Um, one of my favorite stories are from Drupal Europe when Johanna, who is here all the way to the right, she basically was attending one of her first Drupal cons and, um, and at the same time she said, hey, can I help out in the mentoring and the contribution day? And uh, she wrote a great article that I posted here uh, on LinkedIn about her experience as being a Drupal mentor. And I think like the, the story here is also like, you don't have to be, again, you don't have to be a coder or anything to be able to be a mentor, nor to attend contribution uh, day. You can actually, you know, she comes from the market with the marketing uh, background and, uh, and she did a great job of welcoming people to helping people to organize where they could help out, uh, whether if that was an initiative from marketing part or, or to do code. Um, there was also here at the same uh, time um, in Drupal Europe, there was also the slides from um, Ellie about mentoring. 
so where she goes into much more details about how you can help and uh, this is also great slides and i put them also here in the link so you can take a look if you're interested um, and they also have a slack channel and on the community section of drupal.org they also have their own website where you can uh, start involving yourself and see if you can also start helping others to be involved in Drupal contribution. So there are so many other places where you can help out. So I just took those uh, examples, but I could continue actually here for a, a very long time for things that where you can help out and do non-credit contribution. Um, so therefore, make sure you join the conversations that are happening here at bad camp um i saw you know here i think ruby talked about the dti presentation somebody's going to be involved in that uh so take a look also in the in the uh, diversity booth in diversity and inclusion booth or at the drupal association booth they can also probably all tell you how you can also help out in those initiatives and many more so um, here at the bad camp, you know, to start that off, there's a lot of people that can help. And if you if you need help, then please ask. I wish that we could sit somewhere together and and you know that's easier often, but now it is a little bit in our own hands to come in and, and ask, as that's the only way to communicate at the moment in these on these conferences. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about the credit system because we talked about non-code contribution and what is this credit system and what is that that we are always talking about in Drupal or what we use a lot. So the credit system is uh, a, where you actually give credits to those who are participating in issues. And again here, issues used to be very related to something that relates to code but uh, that has changed extremely much now in the last two years. Um, so to start with, you to say like in, in total in the year between uh, July 2018 to June 30th, 2019, there were actually 27,000 uh, code contributions or contributions from 8,000 different individuals that represented uh, over 1,000 different organizations. So I have here a list of those who had most of the credits in this period. But um, if we look at that, what does that mean? It means that if there is an issue or a task on Drupal.org and you participate in that, so for example, we look at back what we looked at earlier, uh, if you want to review a, a Drupal services listing, and you have done something and you have written that uh, everything is good and you gave a green light on that listing, then you get a credit for doing that. And the credit you get as an individual, but you can also give a credit to the company that you're working for or even the client that you're working for if, if that is something that is related. So it meaning that if you have time or if you get time in your company for example to do contribution you could then say i am here speaking at this event i get the credit for that but on behalf of my company so my company also then gets the credit and this is an example of how that is done so when you are doing the uh, credit or the comment in the end you you can tick the box of like if you should credit that to your company and um, what I think, so if you look at the contributions and where are they, where are the credits going to in the contributions on Drupal.org? So if we look at comparison of 2017 to 2018 versus 2018 and 2019, um, there are more contributions happening, but we, at least in the non-code -contribu non contribution, we are extremely proud of this non product related contribution which has of course grown extremely much in this time period but because also it's something that is new so i'm going to go a little bit there so in 2018 it was the first time possible for tracking to track non-code activities on drupal.org so 
I remember, I think, uh, probably it was Rachel or someone that uh, pushed this forward in the Drupal Association, that we could actually create projects on Drupal.org, for example, when we are organizing an event or doing something that of the things that I was mentioning before. And my one of my favorite examples is Imre, because Imre is uh, the president of the Drupal Association in Netherlands. And Imre has been active in Drupal since 13 or almost 14 years. And now in 2018 or 19, he actually received his first credit. And I thought it was amazing because um, Imre is somebody that I look up to here in the in the European community. And I, I looked and I said like, hey, have you like I looked at his profile and it was completely empty. It was like he was non-existing almost in Drupal. But knowing him here in Europe, I know that he's been organizing all these events. There are one of the largest camps going on here in in German, in in Europe that are happening in Netherlands, where he is from. And he is running this local association together with many other people, and they are so active. Um, so I know that he started to get his first credits, and he was extremely happy himself because uh, because he also said to me at some point, he said like, hey, I was always wondering like, how could I get a credit? Because I'm doing so many other things than the code part. Um, so I hope that some of you also will be able to finally get your profile a little bit um, showing at least that you are also active and doing a lot of great things, just like the people who are creating the code. Um, but the last thing maybe about the credits uh, is, of course, like why why the credits and uh, how does this help? Well, there is um, there are many ways of how credits can help you both as an individual, but also as a company. So, for example, if you're an individual, you can also, of course, like show others that uh, that you are active and that's proven by the credits. Of course, like um, if if you think that that plays a role. Um, but also for your company, because now, for example, on the right side here, I, I went to the marketplace and I filtered by Germany. And you actually see the companies that are active in Germany. So if you're an end user looking for a Drupal company, you could go on there and you can see actually who are the ones who are really active uh, in the Drupal project. So are they really doing these things that they are promising in their pitches? You can probably see that just here. So um, there's also on the marketplace, you can see how the marketplace is ranked and it just says there, um, you know, if you are, for example, if you have a Drupal case study, then your ranking get hired or if you have an issue credit and so on. So I think the main point of this um, session is, of course, open source software is made by people just like you and uh, and we are all part of it. So I wish that we can make it more easier for those who do not want to be involved in the code to, to participate. And I think we are getting much better uh, thanks to all these great initiatives and, uh, and many more. So I know that there's gonna be a couple of sessions here during Drupal, Con, uh, Drupal ca uh, Bad Camp where you can uh, attend. But the most important uh, for me, at least, is that you know you just get a lot of friends by doing it, and and that is just for me has been a right, and I've been having a lot of fun and uh, getting to know all these new people, and participating in organizing something with pe completely new people, and I didn't imagine in the age of forty that I would actually get so many new friends. Uh, this is one of the things what makes me always come back. It's the friendship and the great people that are here in the community. But in the end, before we go into the Q&A, there's only one advice that I really wanna give to everyone. And that is that if you are giving volunteer lab labor or if you are participating in anything uh, in this, uh, in, for example, in the Drupal community, we are most likely taking the time from somewhere else. Um, we are taking it either from our family, for our, from our friends, from our employer, 
from our free time or our sleep time. Uh, it comes from somewhere, so we need to account for it. And I think that this is one of the most important lessons that if you are doing something, talk to those who you are taking the time from and get them to be with you on the right. I am extremely happy that I have my husband and I have my two kids there that allow me to do what I am doing and to participate and, and also having my company that is also backing that up and allowing me, for example, to spend my time today and helping me to create and finalize this session today uh, during my work time so I don't have to do that when I then go home and get tired in the evening and, and feel like that I'm disappointing everyone. So if you are doing it, uh, make sure that you let the person know who you are going to be taking the time from and, uh, and get in that sense. Uh, and if it is not the person, it could be your free time. Just make sure that you are then happy with it uh, because we need to stay healthy and sane in this world. So we need to do our sports and make sure that we take care of ourselves. Um, that was it. I would really love to take Anne's questions if you have any. Uh, I know that there's a lot of lot of slides that I went through and, and I hope that it wasn't too quick. But uh, the link to the slides are all in the top. So you can uh, take the um, link and look at it. You can also reuse it in your local camps. Um, you know, please just change it to your, your own slides. And before I take the questions, I just wanna, before I get cut out, there is one thing that is coming up afterwards that I just have to say. <laughs> There's gonna be, you know, sessions coming up uh, with uh, all these four sessions. So please take a look at them. But now going back to questions. Um, so Sophie, I see that you're asking something. Um, so I'm wondering, as you also have a technical knowledge, why did you decide to go on the non-code country way instead of the other way? So being a non-technical person, for me, it sounds a bit easier to contribute with code, especially since it gives quicker results. <laughs> so I think sometimes probably it gives quicker results, but it can also take a long time to get code through, I've heard. <laughs> uh, so. To answer your question on that, like, yes, correct. I, I could have gone and started to code uh, like I did before when I was uh, younger, but I really enjoy the organization part of it. And um, and I also realized really early that there was just so much help needed there while I felt like there was less help uh, needed on the code side. You know, I, I, I'm not saying that like, we need a lot of help there too, but I, I felt like, especially here in, in Germany and in Iceland, that there was just a lot of help needed to get these uh, events organized. So I probably just started to do it because of that. And um, and yeah, and I just really enjoy it and enjoy working with all these people when I do it. So were any, I think there's also some other people chatting on that in the in the link. Oh, in the chat, I mean. Are there any more questions? Or Sophie, did it answer your question? Is anyone interested in anything else? Or do you have any questions? Thank you all. And have a really nice evening uh, or afternoon or morning, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patty. That was such a great presentation. As a non-code contributor, grateful to creating space so people can see how to get involved. Because as running Bad Camp and as an OU Run Drupal Camp Iceland, it's there's a lot of different ways that we need helping hands. So uh, thank you so much for providing this session. We'll, we'll be recording this. It's being recorded and it'll be up on YouTube and the next little bit because we're 100 percent volunteer run um, but thank you so much this is a wonderful session thank you